have a silver medal from the foil, a gold medal in the epee, a bronze in the foil, a bronze in the epee and the sabre. So five medals so far at these Paralympic Games for those three. And the team of France has got characters and experience. France beat Poland on their way to this final. It was the Republic of China overcoming Greece. As I was mentioning, the team of France have that character, Robert Sutter, and we just saw singing away to the camera. Here he is. Nine Paralympic medals. And he's now competing at his eighth Paralympic Games. Well, that's some experience. But last, won a medal, even kissing the Chinese before they start. True French style here by the charismatic Citern. That's incredible. That's <laughs> it just is. <laughs> well, uh, this you would think would be after the match, but really keeping a light-hearted spirit ahead of what will soon be a very exciting, serious match. Yeah, amazing. I mean, so much experience there, but um, obviously he has experience in life as well. And uh, coming through there, uh, Romain Noble and uh, Yannick Ifibi, uh, the other two members of the team. And it's going to be very, very difficult, I think, uh, for the Chinese. They're not going to have it all their own way. France are the reigning world champions in the Team FA event. But China, in great form at these Paralympic Games five individual medals between the three of them. Admittedly, not all in Epe. But still, the team of France, Yannick Efebi, Roman Noble, and Robert Sistern will by no means be feeling complacent. Well, there was their run through, convincingly beating Poland 45-28 to make it into this gold medal match. Yeah, it can't be bad when you put a Paralympic medalist out as one of your weakest fences. So it <laughs> just shows depth. And it's an amazing team, isn't and it? There's there. the lineup for China. Hu Daoling, Su Gang, Tian Jianquan. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a great with one or more medals to their names. And they had a smooth run through, beating Italy and Poland in the pools. And then a comfortable win over Greece in the semi final. So neither team has been really challenged on their route to this gold medal match. Sistern really getting into the team vibe, but also I think just going with his character and putting on a bit of a show. The crowd appreciating every moment of excitement that's going to come in this arena. Yeah, it's quite a few years since he got a medal, isn't it, Sitern? So he's got one here guaranteed, of course. And it's guaranteed gold or silver. Be interesting to see where they put him out and what order the French are going to put their fences out. So uh, everybody else looking very, very nervous and all psyched up. And Robert Sitern just, well, it might be a little bit of nerves as well, but he is a class act. And he's very cool, calm and collected when he's in that chair, I can tell you. Well, he's going to be opening this competition against Tian Jianqua with the bronze in the individual epee and sabre from this Paralympic Games. Only 26 years of age, I think, from China compared to 55-year-old Robert Sitern. But still, Tian Jianquan competing now at his third Paralympics and 
won a medal at every single one. So not bad form, even though many years younger than the Frenchman. Well on his way to equaling that medal haul that Robert Saturn has women's category and wow everybody just loved that it went right to the wire so everybody revved up in this stadium karaoke three and it really is a show being put on by these fences well, if anyone's a showman it is robert's turn but once the mask comes on the real show will begin we've seen all the welcomings all of the friendship happening between the two teams between the coaching staff and the referees but once this match starts that will be forgotten until 45 points are reached at the other end and there's a new Paralympic gold medal team. You can already see there, Robert Saturn starting to get into competition mode. Yeah, I said earlier, when he sits in the chair, you can tell just everything just changes about him. The professionalism, everything. now we're ready to start the gold medal match for the men's epe team event and this i think could be a sign of how close this match could be within the first two seconds a double touch one point a piece and so quick here to turn getting the first lead but a very small margin at this stage First team to 45 points, five per bout. Robert Saturn of France. Just lifting up out of his chair, a little too much. The referee watching closely behind. Has signaled to the head referee. Well, listen to the and crowd the there, card. they don't like it. Do they? Well, I think there might be some many French supporters intently watching this match. Oh, he went up again. That's going to be a point against now because uh, he did clearly lift it up there out of the chair. It's a turn asking for the video review. So the referee just popping his card back in the pocket for the moment. And he'll go and have a chance to discuss with the referee that was watching. That's See from this angle, we can tell. Well, it's hard to see from here with the apron. But the rule being that at least 50% or one buttock must remain on the chair. And the referee was very quick to make that decision. You were right. The point now awarded. to Tian as Saturn lost one and the red card gave one to Tian well look at that it's uh, incredible uh, Saturn there just directing the referees as to what he wants <laughs> not so sure it's what he wants because it's actually going to be no I think he was saying that it was the other way but oh, I, was he <laughs> yeah he was okay well after all that confusion we're at two all there we go. Not for long. Tian Jiankuan getting an early lead after that mistake from Saturn. Saturn giving away an early point with that red card. And now sees France trailing by one.
Tian Jianquan, the younger but in form FAist, putting China with a, into an early lead. Five points to Saturn's three. Yeah, he was uh, pretty angry there, was he? He just uh, annoyed with himself. He knew that went straight through the middle there, didn't it? Look at that. Doesn't get uh, more central than that. So experience, Sitern, and just losing out to Tian. Quickly on to the next bout. Hu Jiaoliang, more face, Roman Noble. So China putting their category B fencer second. And this will be the chance for Roman Noble, category A, to put France back in front. see the tension this for the gold medal every point counts stage nine bouts will decide the gold medal and nothing being left to chance in these tense matches here yeah the fence is going for every small advantage right over the top starting to back that two-point deficit that was opened up in the first bout and it's expected for France to do that their category A of a category B fencer yeah, Wu Daoling won a silver in the individual foil in the B category well that was disallowed due to the yellow card. So France losing some valuable points, but making it back to an equaliser pretty quickly there. Yeah, they're just moving, to, aren't they? Just a, a little bit too much in the chair itself. Not so much for Hugh Dailing, of course, but certainly for the A category fencer. Yeah. 6-5 then, no ball. Well, this would be expected because later on, France will have one of their category B fences facing both of China's category A and expect the tables to turn in those situations. But right now, France take the lead that they will need. They'll need that cushion. Noble doing a, an assertive job here over who. Just waiting for his moment. And there, with a well timed attack. Just checking against the skirt. No light should come on when the tip of the opponent's FA touches the foil skirt. That is off target in wheelchair fencing. Wheelchair FA fencing. Noble close there, just short of his point. Registering and a lovely flick hit to the top of the wrist of Hu. And that was neatly done. High fives, fist pumps. 
between Roman Noble and his coach. Seven points to zero. He couldn't have done more than that. No, he couldn't. And it brings him and brings France into the lead. But next up, it will be turning of the tables because France will put forward their Category B fencer, Yannick Ifby. But he will have that five-point advantage. France lead People's Republic of China, 10 to 5. Sung Gang, the 23-year-old, who is the new Paralympic champion in Category A Epe. Also the bronze medalist in Category A foil up against a Category B fencer who managed to finish fourth in the individual Epe. So on paper, this would be a mismatch. But what can Yannick Ifebi, the young French athlete, produce? Can he get five points on the board before Sung Gang gets 10? Yeah, it's a, a big ask, it is. Ifebi fenced well in the semi-final and uh, he knows that uh, he's got a mountain to climb here. He has the Paralympic champion. Five points ahead and a good possibility here for Sung Gang to pull China back into this. No pressure being Paralympic champion. Well, this very much a team event and athletes in individual sports such as fencing really relish this chance to be part of a team and as much as it is individual bouts to five as we've seen it really is about the overall score and the overall tactics of the team well, France at this stage lead ten points to five but now they have a Category B fence up against the Paralympic champion from Category A. Well, France will celebrate double touches in this situation. Yeah, this is up to 15, remember. So Sun, Sun Gang has to try and get as many points back as possible, up to 15. Another double. Sun Gang will be after those single points. And at the moment, the gap remains five points difference. France with the lead. If they be trying to keep out the way. But he came in then and another double touch. This looking good for France. The coach of Sun Gang. And he'll be happy. Sun Gang getting his first single point for China in his opening bout. Bout number three. Nine bouts. We'll see the teams battle it out to 45 in total, 45 points. Still a long way to go in this gold medal match. Sun Gang has just brought back one point. He's got four more that he needs to equalize and there's another one. So quick, so sharp by Sun. Yeah, that was like lightning, wasn't it? There, Sun Gang under pressure, but now within three points. If heavy, maybe just backing off ever so slightly, and he cannot afford to do that when against a Paralympic champion, especially from the category above. But now maybe he's coming back 
into France. China have dominated in the fencing over the last three days. They've got some pressure put on them now by the French team. Coming back, Sung Gang. Yeah, a little bit of pressure. It's the first pressure we've seen on the coach of the Chinese team. A little bit concerned. Sung Gang starting to show his prowess. Seven points to Efebi's four. Febby yet to score a single hit, but it's the doubles that have been keeping him in the lead, and it's another double that secures the lead after three bouts. Yannick Febby, only five points to Sun Gang's eight. For uh, Yannick Febby and also for France because I think the Chinese team would have been expecting Sun Gang to pull more points back there. Celebrations there from the French. Well, only two points separating the gold medal and the silver medal at this stage, but it won't be until we reach 45 that the new Paralympic champions will be decided. Hu Daoliang up against Robert Sutern. And this, a mismatch in the other direction. Hu Daoliang, category B fencer. Silver medal in the foil already at these games. Yeah, well, this up is. against the very experienced Robert Sutern of France with yes. his nine Paralympic medals. I'm going to say this is a, a great opportunity, isn't it, now for the French uh, with the experience of Citerne as well, just to go ahead and to increase their lead. And we can hear the support there for Citerne up in the, in the audience. Well, the Chinese team giving Hu Dailang just advice as to what to do. Well, nothing being left to chance. The platform's being set up precisely and nothing will start until the referee going to move the platforms together Yeah, a little bit of a problem trying to get it moved across there. It has to be precise. And every one of the fences that I've seen just so meticulous with their equipment has to be exact. bit of concern in the Chinese camp there they look so confident coming through well they won't be having their feathers ruffled at this stage just training by two points and only one third of the way through this match and 
There's only two points separating them. So Hugh Delong has, well, he knows exactly what he's got to do. Mexican wave going around the crowd again. And I think everybody just waiting till they quieten down. Apron goes on just to cover the wheelchair. So B category, Hugh De, De Long and Robert Sitern, uh, Sit he's an A category. So he'll have slightly more manoeuvrability in the wheelchair. Well, after that slight pause in proceedings, the focus will return. And this now, the second bout of three for these two athletes. Nine bouts in total. And the referee just asking the crowd to quieten down so that the fences can hear the instructions from the referee and incredibly quick off the mark from who delighted with that back now within one point of france and who the category b fencer up against the turn category a and the referee so precise in everything she is checking the angle of the shoulders should be in line with the chair but then to turn equally quick off the mark putting it one apiece and who just noticing the same point that the referee had and i think referee thinking it was the skirt but i think who trying to point out that Saturn was maybe getting an advantage from the angle in his wheelchair. And incredibly quick, the 55-year-old from France showing all of his years of experience and losing nothing in reaction time. No, absolutely amazing, isn't it? Uh, it's just so quickly up there. And really, literally going on the A of Ali. 18-14 now, France. Double hit, point each. Fighting for every point, China. He's only one point away, but it seems as though the referee not going to allow any mistakes. And she's asking, going to have a quick look at the video replay from that. And in Epe, double touches are completely allowed, so she'll just be checking that no one moved before Ale or that there was no excessive movement coming from the chairs. Well, I think somebody of uh, uh, Robert Sitern's experience will take every centimetre that he can possibly take there. And the referee, uh, uh, not the best time to make a, an enemy of the referee, I think. I well, know, but the crowd, very disappointed with that. And who really trying everything there who not happy about that he celebrated as though he thought it was his hit and it wasn't even a double touch unless the equipment not working but it is the hit will stand and robert Saturn gives france a five point lead after that very tense match robert Saturn five points to huge aliens two in that bout about four and that will put the overall score to 20 points to 15 for France over China. Uh, this is gamesmanship at its very best, isn't it? Just going for every little uh, centimetre or 
every little bit of advantage that he can possibly get there to turn. And the referee wasn't having, having it. Well, we have seen this referee of the last couple of days never want to leave anything to doubt, checking the video replay on several occasions in some of those foil matches. Well, up next, Tian Jianquan and Yannick Febi. Yannick Febi, the Category B fencer in the French team. Held his own fairly well in his first bout. And now he faces Tian Jianquan, the bronze medalist in the individual F8 from Category A. Another tough challenge for the Frenchman. But it was against Sun Gang, the gold medalist, where he only dropped three points. And if he manages to only drop three points in this situation, he'll keep France in the lead. But I'm sure Tian Jianquan has got other ideas. Yeah, well, he is a fighter, if I be. He really is. I was going to say, can he pull back the deficit, Jian Jin Kwan? Well, you can feel the tension, the pressure on the referees in these situations. Quite immense coming from the coaches, the fences themselves, but also the crowd getting incredibly into the moment here. These next few bouts will decide which team go home with a gold medal and which team will leave with the silver. Febby trying to come forwards, but then it was Gian with that attack. Not successful. Yeah, well, if Febby had been extremely awkward for all of the fences up against him and he sneaks points. Well, this quite incredible because the referee calling halt it's hard to believe that no one has scored a point with so much interaction so many attacks so many counter attacks in the first 42 seconds yeah. the yellow card there being awarded to Tian but still no points on the board for either fencer Tian Jiankuan the first to score a hit in this bout, the fifth of nine. Coming up to the halfway point. This match, the first to 45 in five point increments. The winner of this bout will be the first to 25. But the score only. 2016 at this stage. Jian Jiankuan gradually starting to show his skill here, his pedigree. Bronze medal to his name from two days ago in the individual F8. And he opened the Paralympic Games with a silver with a bronze medal in the Sabre as well. So Knows yep. how to perform yeah, I'm in sure this Paralympic environment. Tian just expecting, I think, to pick up points here, but he's got to be careful because if Ebi just waits, doesn't he? Very quick on the counter attack. And now the clock is ticking down. A double touch at this stage really does favor the fencer with the overall lead. If Febby only one point, Tian three, but it's the overall score that's so important. France leading by three. Oh, sweet touch there by Tian Jiankuan. Bringing it to just within 
Two points. If Ebby would be happy with a few more double touches. Tian, on the other hand, very much after some vital singles. So into the final minute of this bout. Tian still trailing overall by two, even though he has an individual lead four to one. Yeah, I don't think if Fabi will mind that time going either. So this is where the time comes into play. Oh, point away there, and now China up to 20. Well, if Febby just lifted his wrist too high and the point of Tian was there to catch it. And suddenly, China within one point of France. down the crowd are caught with such concentration as are the athletes but if Febby caught off guard and now the score is equal 21 seconds remain and Tian Jiankuan doing a good job six points to one over if Febby yeah I think you'll want another couple of points here if possible Clock's ticking down. Tian coming in with a last minute attack, a double touch. Doesn't change the overall score with points difference. Bringing them both up to 22. Five seconds remain. Every second counts in this situation. And it really does. What a hit that was by Tian. 0.79 seconds left on the clock. And he just puts China in the lead. Well, neither fence are trying to do anything with such little time on the clock. But Tian just waited. Maybe if Ebi relaxed a little too soon and just let China take the advantage. Eight points to two. Tian over if Ebi. Don't forget that was category A. And the bronze medalist from category A. Fencing category B fencer from France. And well, so, so close. I mean, yeah. the last second is the first time China go ahead. I think uh, it went on every second counts, didn't it? I think so. Every second counts, and it did. It was literally in the last second. So there, People's Republic of China, 23 points. France, 22. And, wow, well, it's so, so close. Sun Gang from the People's Republic of China next on to the piece, his opponent, Roman Noble. Yep, the Paralympic champion on next for China. One point ahead. This, I think, is going to be nail-biting to the end if the first half of this gold medal match is anything to go by and if the score line at the halfway stage is anything to go by and don't forget the score at the moment 23 points to china 22 to france it is now the first to 30 overall so china needing to score seven to finish this bout france needing to score eight now the other way the bite will finish is if the time runs out as we just saw previously. So whichever comes first, three minutes or one of these fences making their overall score to 30. Well, the referee very big on the posturing and body positioning of the fences. Now this is a Fast and furious start to about six. And it's another point for China. Sun Gang getting his first point over Noble. Yeah, he started very aggressively, didn't he, Sun Gang? Well, 
Oh, the ground lead just caught underneath the platform. Which could limit the conduction of a point. Noble equalising the individual scores, bringing it back to just within one to the overall team scores. Not happy with the amount of movement coming from his chair. The French fencer tightening a couple of notches on the ratchet. And some words of encouragement from the coach on the sideline. The crowd getting behind the fencers in this gold medal match. The men's FA team event. Well, this referee is not going to let anything past her. And awarding Noble a yellow card for twisting in his chair before the start. Well, Noble really coming into his own here, equalising 24 each, but 2 1 up on Sun, the new reigning Paralympic champion. Well, now look how they move. There's uh, so much movement uh, in those chairs that uh, they're just moving right the way along the platform. They'll have to readjust up uh, the wheelchairs along the platform, get them central again. Wow, so aggressive. Sun Gang. Well, there's a different edge to this Chinese team in this match, that's for sure. a piece but it's the first to 30 at the end of this bout Sun regaining the lead for China equalising the individual scores at three a piece well fighting for every point here every point so important and he picks up another one there Sun Gang Asking if he can change the curve of his F8 after that last hit. Sun Gang just edging ahead of Noble. Double touch, which now favours China. 28 26. China two points away from handing over the lead as they head into the final three bouts. Well, Noble quick to attack, but just stayed extended in a very vulnerable position and Sun picking off the athlete from France and then receiving a red card. And suddenly the score has changed rather dramatically. Roman Noble scoring just four and Sun Gang seven. And at the end, that suddenly really did turn. Yeah, just a little look around at the referee as well there. And he wasn't happy at all. Uh, that point cost dearly, but now 30 to China and well, four adrift now, four ahead of France and how quickly that turned. It just shows how these athletes cannot afford to make mistakes. And it's the French team who have made a few mistakes already throughout this. We've seen two red cards and both of them giving points away to China. Yu Dal, Dal Yang up next for People's Republic of China. Yannick Febi for France. This is the only time that the category B fencers will meet an opponent from the equal category. So expect this to be very close. Sun Gang will have a four point advantage. The next milestone will be 35 points. But the score at the moment, China on 30, France on 28. 
26. Well, it has been close, hasn't it, all the way through, but like you say, just a couple of mistakes that have cost very valuable points to France. Can they fight back? Well, Ifebi, he is a fighter and he's going to make it very awkward for Hugh Jai Lung. Well, this is a real crucial point in the match and Ifebi showing his intentions early. Falling back just one point, but he's got... A bit of a challenge, and here goes the Frenchman. What can he do? He wants to be the first to 35 points, but still trails by two. And the overall team score, who yet to get a point on the board, but the fist pump and scream just proving how tense and important it is. The coach even showing some emotions there as she is affected by this tension, this match with so much at stake yeah i think she's actually telling him just to calm down a bit concentrate on the job oh another one excellent so 31 now 2-2 two, two. two a piece not for long so quick by efebi and just bringing the margin back to three points china still leading let me try the same tactic there, but who ready? A Frenchman. Four points to who's three, who's two. Overall score, China lead 32-30. France getting ever closer. Are they going to regain the lead at this vital stage? Well, it's very possible, isn't it? If Ebby, like I say, just been fencing so well, he really has, and every one of the fence is finding it very awkward against him. Hugh, though, pulls another one back. 33 to China. Well, it's now it starts to get really interesting, isn't it? Well, if Ebby, a little lucky with that one. Didn't get point on on the initial attack but renewed and got the point 6-3 if they to who but still China leading who bring it back to 4-6 and putting his overall team score just one away from finishing this bout first to 35 about number seven if they doing everything to beat China to those 35 points. Well, it's very possible. Just a little patient. Of course, if Febby celebrating wildly. That's the final bout for these two fencers. Hu Jialieng picking up five points to add to China's score. Yannick Febi looking to crawl it back. Got seven points on the board over who, but not quite enough. China still leading, but now only by two points. Well, again, very, very close. And look how close it is. People's Republic of China, 35. France, 33. Two bouts still to come. Sung Gang up next against Robert Saturn. This will be an exciting bout, no doubt. Sung Gang, the in-form Paralympic champion. Robert Saturn, the experienced epist that he is with his nine Paralympic medals. Rainy 
winning over eight Paralympic Games will face the newcomer, Sungan, competing at his first Paralympics, but already a title in the individual FA. Yeah. What a first Paralympic Games it is for him. And that man there on the right, Robert Sitern, his eighth, I think we said, his eighth Paralympic Games. Well, at the moment, China with a two-point advantage over the reigning world champions, France. But now it's reduced to one very quickly by Saturn. Well, it looks like France no, could end up suffering from their mistakes. Yeah, so he lifted up. That was a, a yellow card for him. If he does it again, it's another point, and these are crucial, these points now. Well, Sutern did give away a point in his opener against Tian. He cannot afford to do that against the Olympic champion, Sun. Thirty-six to thirty-four in this exciting Ongo. Paralympic gold medal match. Sun showing his pedigree, and you can see who giving the encouragement here to his teammate. What can the experience to turn do under this pressured situation? A double touch, not. Referee just ensuring the wheelchairs are completely covered by the full apron. Another double. Well, this is going to go so close all the way. China now one point away from finishing the penultimate bout in the lead, and then it will come down to the final two fences to decide the gold medal. Just two points separating them. You can feel the tension. This fight has gone to the double touches and China lead as a result of those doubles. Robert Sutern. exciting atmosphere the french fans are out in force and gosh they are being really treated to a spectacle here that fight was over so quickly but china maintained their two-point lead it was five hits apiece for the new paralympic champion sun gang up against the experienced veteran robert Sutern. So there's the scoreline. People's Republic of China will go into the final bout with 40 points on the board. France with 38. Tian Jianquan for China. Bronze medalist. Twice over already at these Paralympic Games. Will be desperate to make it to the top of the podium. Roman Noble of France. Best he has managed so far at these games is a fifth in the individual FA. Well, now he has quite a challenge. Can he help France to add a title of Paralympic gold medalist? Because they are the reigning world champions in this team event. But they are yet to have a gold medal at the Paralympics. It doesn't get much closer than this, does it? It's just uh, amazing. And the tension, you can feel it with the team and with everybody here in the stadium. Well, it looks as though already France are going to have a warning. We only have a two point difference between these teams and France throughout this match 
have lost two points to red cards. Yeah, and absolutely crucial points. Well, more than two points because they have points taken away and given to the other side. So three or four points have been given away, so to speak, by mistakes made with excessive movement in the chair. Noble cannot afford to give another point to China. Tentatively coming forwards, trying not to make an excessive movement, but look how closely the referee on the right is watching the movement of Noble. Yeah, Tian. I was going to say Tian doesn't mind that clock going either. He just uh, wants the clock to, to go down because if it goes that full two minutes, they're going to win. Well, he so. knows that and he also knows that Noble now will be slightly wary of coming too far out of his chair because that will also give Tian a point. Oh, I think that's going to be it. That's going to be a point, isn't it? Well, the French coach watching nervously. The referee with such eagle eyes watching for any excessive movement. More than one buttock leaves the seat of the wheelchair. It equates in a red card. And a red card at this stage could be a game changer. It would give a point to China. And the referee just talking to the fencers. Bit of confusion from Tian, asking for clarification. And then the decision. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going for every centimetre here, aren't they? Just anything that they can get. This is uh, absolutely, well, yeah. Well, into the last minute, they just took a minute off the clock. And this now is really going to mean that Tian will defend. And Noble has got to get two points, but now he needs three. Tian Jianquan has just put China so close to that gold medal. France trailed by three points, but look at the clock into the last 40 seconds. And Tian is not going to risk coming forwards and making too many mistakes. He's got three points in hand. Noble brings it back but this really is a tough ask from of the Frenchman yeah it is but he's gonna go for it you can guarantee that they're fighters the French and they don't give up they're just gonna keep coming forwards but Tian knows that both of these athletes have Paralympic medals but neither has a Paralympic gold medal this will decide and it will give a gold medal to one of these teams. Could start to slip away for France now. It is desperation, but Noble has got her yellow card. He can't afford to make a mistake, but he can't afford to sit back and Tian is just going to defend this point. Noble can only attack. What is going to happen? This really has been so close right the way through, but we didn't expect it to come down to the final eight seconds. One point to bring it to a draw. What is going to happen here? It's a last oh, minute got attack. It. Oh, that's incredible. So 41 each. Now then, what's going to happen here? Oh my goodness, this is ecstatic stuff here. Wow, nail biting doesn't describe it. A mistake by the referee there, just started the clock. Took a second off, maybe that was intentional, not quite sure, but two seconds left and it's a draw. Well, now we are going to go to extra time. This is incredible. Well, the French are celebrating here. 
Well, yeah, they're celebrating as if they've won the gold medal here, and I, I'm not sure what's happening. He's looking slightly confused at the reaction of the French in this situation. Saturn hugging Ifebi. Noble taking his. Well, I'm wondering if it's uh, just because of the um, the penalty uh, against, but that's against the French. Well, it is confirmed, and what a painful finish that was for Tian Jianquan. But the French team, the world champions, are now the Paralympic champions, and the French fans go wild. What an emotional moment. Robert Saturn has another Paralympic medal, but this time a gold. So his nine Paralympic medals the last time he won one of those.